Oh boy! Bitey the coach is back. It's been a while, you know, I take my time when I do some stuff. Kinda been busy, lazy, you know, the works. But what are we doing today? We're gonna be learning some advanced stuff. Advanced tactics. On, what are we gonna be learning it on? Oh, nothing. The skulk. The very basic and absolutely minimalist life form choice for the alien player. Often, 95% of the time, you're gonna be stuck on this little four-legged scurrying creature trying to get around the map and fight some marines who obviously may be a little bit out tech for you. You find yourself getting killed, peeking around the corner, getting popped. Oh no, not good, not good at all. So, Vitey's here to help you out. Kinda give you that extra edge you need as a player and maybe some of those things you didn't think about when you first started playing the game. So without further ado, we're gonna kinda get this started. I have my man, Edak over there. Edak, let's give him a shout out. Yo, Edak, say what's up to the viewers. Kinda give a little bit of a... Yo, what up, what up, what up? Now see, that's Edak. We're not gonna use you right now, Edak. So you can just sit around and do some stuff. But he's in here too to show us off a little bit of stuff that'll be going on later. I know he just said something. You probably can't even hear him. He's like, yo, what up, what up? But back on topic. So let's go ahead and get this started to not take up too much of your time right now. Number one, your skulk movement might be a problem. So let's kind of look down on what I got on my screen right there. You look down there near the health area, you see this little current speed and vertical speed thing. Let's kind of look and see how that works right now. Base skulk speed kind of cruising along at a seven, going left seven, going right seven, going backwards 5.25. Not bad, not bad. Let's kind of see what we can do about that. Number one, rule number one about your skulk movement, don't stay on the ground. Now I don't mean do this, don't do your little jumps, what we need to do, huh, 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 huh. Right now the current iteration of wall jump basically gives you a flat boost off of any wall base surface. So your speed is instantly bumped up to about 9-ish, eh, then decreases slowly down after that. Now you might be like, oh Bitey, I already do that part. It's like, oh, do you? That means you're one step down. So what else can you do with the current iteration of wall jumping? Well, here's another little hidden feature of this progress. So you're on a wall, you jump it. But did you know that jumping from a higher spot on the wall ends up giving you more ground-based acceleration? True. Kind of show off right here. Get up to the eight right there. Go up from here, go up to 10. Ooh. Now, that's kind of your area on how you initiate your speed. There is a second feature still lacking around like a very much diverse application, but you can chain together several small wall jumps to kind of keep your speed de increasing at small intervals. You can kind of see right here, chaining together some wall jumps does add a little bit of extra speed. So you get these long hallways, try to chain together your wall jumps in a nice fancy manner, and you should be able to get a slightly better speed boost rather than just going from one wall to the other wall. Also, now bunny hopping is slightly in this game. Now, you might be thinking like, bunny hopping, source bunny hopping? And the answer is no, not source bunny hopping. As a technique for momentum saving, you have a 300 millisecond window or something like that to tap your jump button again to not be applied any ground friction. So say that we land on the ground and we kind of like slow down. Let's look at that speed right there. Let's kind of look at that again. Look at the speed. That's about 300 milliseconds of time that you have to press space or jump or whatever key you have bound to not drop so dramatically. So we drop up here, kind of conserve, conserve, conserve. We got about right there to we run about seven. And just to kind of show you one more time, if you don't use your jumps, all the way down to seven real quick. Now another little hidden movement thing is, uh, you know how I said moving backwards is about 5.25? moving backwards up a wall is not 5.25. It actually goes up to your max speed of seven. So a nice little nifty feature. If you ever find yourself like, oh man, I'm backing up, backing up. Shoot. Quick, fast, speed. Extra speed is extra life. Life and speed is part of the Skulk's bread and butter. Moving on, let's look at my lesson sheet right here. Number two was now. I know you might be like, why do you not moving? Well, 
basic sculpt decision making. Oh yeah, that's right. So you got your movement down, but you're still dying all the time. It's like, oh man, what do I do? I can't get a kill. It's like, well, let me kind of break it down. At the beginning of the game, the skulk really isn't meant to, you know, kill stuff. That's not really his main purpose. What you're best at is A, ambushes, you know, say that we got that sneaky marine, he's coming in from reactor core. Oh no, what are we gonna do? See, we wanna set up for ambushes and sneaky plays, or at least try to get around the man. They always wanna check their corners, you know, good marines, let me kinda break it down, like a marine like myself, I will check every single corner. So you can't always depend on ambushes working. What you wanna do is completely negate his ability to see you and try to sneak by and actually go hit RTs. Your number one job is your skull, economic damage with an expendable unit. All those big players on the field, lurks, spades, onos. They can't do anything without the basic ground infantry unit doing their damage to the marine economy. That's killing these things, these nice little structures right here. Trying to sneak around and get to them. Not those. Not those. Everybody always seems to think the power node is your primary target, which is just not true. You always want to be trying to get to these extractors and kill them. Now I said decision making is what we we're going to be focusing on here. A lot of this decision making is kind of what keeps you alive and gets you up to those high life forms if you wanted to go up there. So let's kind of go over an example A of one scenario that we got going on here. So we have Marines coming in from reactor core. Oh man, they're in there. They're in there. They're going to be building. Now you have two options. You can either go in and fight trying to take on Marines. Eh, you can try. It can be fun. It can be a challenge even. But it doesn't always yield you the best kind of results. So what are we going to be looking at going into? We're going to be looking at trying to get around the Marines. Not fight directly unless you really have to. Or if you have an overwhelming force. Say if you got a few Skulks ready to kind of dive in on a fight. Maybe a Lurk. Something else to kind of increase your chances of winning a fight. If you're solo, I would always recommend trying to get around the Marines. So say that they're like there. There he is right there. There's Edak. He's trying to be sneaky. He's looking around. Edak, just keep doing what you're doing. Look sneaky. And he's trying to be real cautious about moving in. Now move forward and go out of there. Like a regular Marine look. Like, oh, I didn't check my corners. Leave that room. Look at him. Look at him. Just running on by. Now look at it. Now you actually kind of have this opening here. Thank you, Edak. You can go do about what you were doing. Got this opening here. Yeah. And uh, now you can actually bite the RT. Number one technique. How to bite an RT. You might see some guys bite it like this. You might see some guys bite it like this. Might even bite it like this. I don't know. There's all sorts of different ways you can bite it. But there is actually one way that is most effective. Let's say that the Marines start in Data Core over here. Kind of look at your map. The little, uh, what is that? That's my right hand side. Right hand side. Yeah. You got to remember that. Don't want to mix that up. Data Core right there. You look at this little pathway going up through glass hallway. If they are spawning data core and you want to hit reactor core RT, your best positioning is going to be something like this. You're going to be doing this. Ground-based movement is actually what I find gives me the most success in pugs, matches, and scrims. The reason being, like, when you mount yourself up on here, it's actually really hard to tell about your, uh, your skulk's orientation on the object. Now, you can do some fancy movement looking like this. It kind of gives you this crazy looking rotation stuff. But I find the most success being right here. Say, um... Let me go get Edak. Edak, come back to reactor core. I got to show you something. He's going to come back in here and he's going to be, you're going to play as a typical Marine trying to uh, save an extractor. Don't actually shoot me though, please. Don't shoot me. Oh, okay. So he's going to be coming in here and I'm going to be showing you how you can try to juke around a Marine. You're going to have your alien vision on and look at him kind of sitting right there. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing movement like this. I'm going to be trying to bait out bullets as I can. He might be trying to shoot me once or twice. But all of this time, I'd be biting the RT. Just kind of munching on the RT. If you can bait out bullets and force the Marine to close distance on you, then you have the option to try to attack him. But say that you're doing this kind of movement right here, you know where he's going to be shooting for you, and you know he's gonna, where he's going to be coming from. Always kind of keeping him in the center of this little circle right here. This little piston right there. Kind of maximizes your cover and ability to take bullets. Because it's hard to shoot through this thing right here. I actually can't shoot him very well through there. Neither can he. Can you pierce that underneath it? See, he's like, can you parasite underneath that? That's because the hitbox is a little bit wonky. So come on, close distance and kind of come closer to me. And you can see as the Marine starts coming closer to you, what you're going to start doing is you're going to start doing this little jukey pattern right here. 
you can actually wall jump off of uh, extractors. Now, eventually, now if he was, if this wasn't Edex, I'd probably be wasting bullets all over the place. And um, you could probably manage to get the kill here. But you always have to balance between two decisions. Do I fight or do I stay? Now, reactor core is actually really hard to leave. So most of the time when I get in this position, I just dive out whenever I know that he's low on bullets. You want to make sure that he dumps the entire AR clip. When they're forced to use pistol, it's better against your armor if you still have some left. So that's kind of your advanced look at it. And uh, that's Bitey's RT biting method. I think, I think that's it for that section. Thank you, Edak. Let's see. How to yeah. bite RTs effectively. Queen, we went from number one to number three pretty easily. Target priorities and how to bite structures effectively. So let's kind of go over this little thing here. We're getting into that late game when we start having some base plays. Maybe you're that one lonely Marine trying, or lonely Skulk trying to get some work done at the main base of the Marines here. Well, the same thing is true for every single Marine structure. Edak, can you drop a phase gate and all sorts of, uh, every kind of Marine tech structure in here? IPs and all that goody stuff. So what we're going to kind of show off here is um, how you can maximize your biting on every single uh, marine structure. So we've got a phase gate, we've got a protolab, we've got an IP, and where's an arm slap? Put an arm slap down. Oh, there it is. And um, each structure kind of has its sweet spots to bite stuff. So say that there's a marine in this room, you always want to bite phase gates kind of with this position, and you want to make sure that you keep the marine on the other side of you. You know, you can kind of dance in front of it. EDAC, you can come out of the chair and kind of... Uh, be a little dude on the field. So you kind of look at it. I'm going to be biting it like this. If he tries to close distant, I'm going to keep rotating around it and just try to maximize my amount of uh, cover. Because the more cover you give yourself, the longer you can bite, the longer you can stay on it, and hopefully the longer you can stay alive. Now, say we have proto labs, you kind of do this with the proto labs. Same thing. I think. If you tag them, this kind of stuff can happen. You can really look at how to maximize your ability to save save face by just kind of using that extra cover. IPs, same thing. This little thing right here is actually able to uh, block bullets. This whole thing. Kind of going like that, round it. Arms lap, uh, you, when you go for arms lap, it's actually probably one of the hardest structures to actually get on because it's this little armory turtle right here and he's just like looking real angry and he's really short. So kind of doing stuff like that is your best option. Where's the OBS? OBS is a little bit the same thing, you know. This whole dish right here will block bullets very nicely, too. If you can kind of get kind of buried in there. He's actually got it in a really good spot. It's probably the harder thing to pick because usually the comms always putting it really close to that corner right there. And, eh, yeah, you really shouldn't kill robos. They have a bazillion HP. Armories, same thing as the protolab, kind of like an RT. And that's about it for structures, you know, just kind of making sure that you maximize yourself when you bite stuff. It's all about keeping alive and staying alive as long as you can while you bite something. Just thinking about those little variables can really help out in the long run. Just getting that extra 100, 150 damage really makes a difference on the uh, next time you might come through to try to get the pick. And what do we got left? Oh, team base plays with Skull. So your last little area of uh, expertise is going to be um, what happens when, you know, I went my high life form and I got killed. Well, you can either do one of two things. You can kind of ask for that, uh, can I get another blank name life form, please, commander? And then he might be like, well, yeah, of course. Or then he's going to be like, no. And then you're like, well, shoot, what do you do now? Well, you're the skull. You are expendable. What every other life form on the field does not have is the option to just die on anything that they want. You can go in, you can get killed, but you're going to come back and it doesn't cost any money. And, you know, you're actually still quite an effective life form. You can take out JPs, you can take out structures. You're kind of the bread and butter of the alien army, as we were talking about earlier. So what it all comes down to is, um, when do I, when is it okay to sack yourself as a skulk, you know, making plays and making saves? Uh, making plays, making saves. And um, so what you're going to be doing once you die is your high life form. Or if you're a permaskulk, you can also do that too. You're going to be trying to assist high life forms wherever and whenever you can. Say you see a lurk and he's, um, he's chipping some marines and the marines look like they're about to man up and get angry at him. Well, what you want to do is you want to keep your high life form buddies alive at all costs. 
you are the bullet baits for them. You take the shells off of them, and you let them get into the fight and make those crucial plays. So if we had, you know, I, I wish I kind of had some more footage. I'll try maybe to make some more bonus footage or something like that. Me and Edak will show off how you really get it done. But, you know, always try to help out your high life forms when you can. If you're still you're on your skulk, you know, save the Gorge, save the Fade, save the Onos. Onoses are actually giant bullet shields for everything else to kind of get in and do work. Because usually people want to focus them down. And, uh... You know what? That's about it, actually. I just got to the very end of my, uh... My, uh, little speech thing here. So, to reiterate. Let's go over that Skulk movement one more time. Kind of looking at that little, uh... Little bar down there. Skulk movement 101. Jump off walls. Jump off walls from higher spots to get bigger boosts of speed. Look at that, getting all the way up to 12. Chain wall jumps together on surfaces. You have a 250 millis... I didn't say this earlier because I forgot about it, but there's actually a small window that where you can uh, chain jumps together and get more speed. But if you spam it, it won't work. If you spam wall jump on a surface, you notice that I'm doing it right now, I'm not getting any extra speed. So you need to shoot it at about 250 millisecond intervals about four times a second. You can uh, get a small amount of speed boost chaining wall jumps together. When you're on the ground, you have like a 300 millisecond window to uh, not take any ground friction. We went over that earlier. You can kind of see it at the start of the video again. Then uh, going back over your number one jobs is a uh, skull. Hit RTs, hit res, ambush plays. Never go straight at Marines. I can't express that enough. You are not able to take Marines on directly. If you are, it's because they're kind of bad. And nothing against you Marines who uh, can't make those plays, but those Skulks need to be killed. And one of these days, you'll be able to take them out. And then uh, biting RTs effectively, kind of remember that over. How to know when to bite RTs, the different methods that you can use to do it. You, I would recommend using the bitey method. There are times when you can get out and get in, you know, fighting on those RTs, trying to get it down, or trying to save face and go over to the next RT on the field. That's kind of one of those decisions like, do I want to die here and just try to get as much damage as I can? Or should I spread it over, try to get to the next RT down on the field and just keep one of those Marines busy trying to defend all those RTs? Number one plays, kill RTs. Try to stay alive too. Balance those two together. Last one. Target priorities, biting structures, you know, you can watch that section again. It's pretty well covered. And, um, basically not one to die. The last section that I just went over. So, I hope you find this constructive. And, uh, it should prove to be beneficial. If you have any kind of feedback to give me about this kind of, uh, teaching stuff, feel free to leave a comment. And this is probably going on the Wasabi Showcast State of the Game. If I'm being broadcast live on that, yo, the Spidey pre-recorded. This is my section. Other than that, everybody else, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, please. I'd want to know how else to make this community a better place. Teach everybody how to play the game at a higher level. Probably coming up soon, I'll do one about marine movement and all sorts of other goodies. And um, in case anybody's interested, the music that we're listening to is... In Division, I believe is what this is called. Some pretty good stuff. And, uh, yeah. Had a lot of fun. Hope you did, too. And enjoy the rest of your NS2 days. This is Coach Nexel Bitey, signing out.